Hello, this is Greg Smith with Ghost Time Me Up, and I'd like to thank you for sharing your valuable time today exploring our online class registration software. If you would like to learn more about it or explore in more depth, this is my contact information. You can either call me directly or email me at the uh, address there on the screen. We'll come back that to the end of the uh, webinar here so you can, if you didn't get this written down. Uh, before we actually jump into showing you Gosami up, I wanted to give you just a little bit of background with our company. We've been doing this now actually 20 plus years, and you're, as a result, you're going to find that we cast a pretty wide net in terms of the solutions we provide, and you're going to find that our solutions are very rich, mature, and robust. You, we, we do work with a lot of different types of clients that would include government agencies, federal, state, local levels. Uh, private enterprise, both startups, small companies, as well as Fortune 500 companies, nonprofits, medical health care, and real big in the K-12 higher education area. Basically, our sweet spot is anyone that needs any type of online class registration management, and uh, as well as robust reporting and analytics. So I did mention that we've been doing this for 20 years, and we've learned a lot in those 20 years. And we've learned that there are three very critical areas for your success, and we focus on those like a laser beam. The first one would be an easy-to-use front end. That's where your folks will go to search, sign up, and if you're doing e-commerce, paying for their class, classes. That process for them needs to be very simple, quick, and easy. It needs to be customizable by you, not only in the aesthetics of the page, but in terms of the data that you collect. And finally, it needs to look cool, as, as the site would be branded for your organization. Secondly, would be automated administrative features, things like email confirmations, reminders, class lists. All those things that are normally very lengthy and mundane activities are automated to increase your efficiencies. Bottom line, from an administrative standpoint, save you time and money. And finally, and thirdly, robust analytics, powerful reporting. And in today's world, big data is becoming more and more important, and we certainly have moved along with those trends because we have over 55 reports baked into Gosami, all of which are customizable and exportable, whether it be for student history, class history, data mining to promote future classes, financial reporting. You're going to find that it's, it's all there for you. So the three areas critical for your success would be an easy-to-use front end for your end users, automated administrative features to save you time and money, and robust analytics. Bottom line with the entire process, we want to do the heavy lifting for you to get that automation in there as well as the powerful reporting and analytics. There are two parts to go sign me up. The first part is the public side, and we'll be jumping into that here shortly. Uh, that site will be branded for you and we'll talk about that in more detail in here in just a moment. I should also point out that part of our service to you, should you decide to choose Go Sign Me Up, is that we train you. You'd have your own deployment specialist working just with you through webinar training. So you've got that. The other part of Go Sign Me Up is the administrative side of the back end. The public does not see that. You can have as many system administrators within the system as you deem appropriate. The, uh, uh, the, the public, as I mentioned, does not see this. This is where you add classes and run reports. Now, bear with me. I'm going to share my browser with you, and we're going to start to take a look at GoSamia. So here it is. This is a public side page. It's just a demo site that I've put together. Let's talk about the anatomy of the page. In the upper right-hand corner is the home button. It brings you back here. The button to the right of that, create account. Uh, I should point out that one does need to create an account in order to sign up for a class. Obviously, you need to have at least their name, email address, et cetera, if you're going to be, be responding to them that way, obviously, with confirmations. But this registration form is completely customizable by you. You can have just a few fields listed there that would be uh, required for folks to, to fill in, or you can have up to 43 fields, and of which those fields, as I alluded to just a moment ago, can be required. They can be optional. They can be different formats like text fields, drop-down fields, radio button fields, date fields, all types of, of data that you can collect there. You can see that I've put these in three different boxes or widgets and categorize those. So you can categorize those how you want and you can have additional boxes or widgets there. 
So you could have more or less, whatever would be appropriate for your needs. Also, you can exercise the option of a terms and conditions or a registration policy that would have to be agreed to in order to create an account. You don't have to exercise that option, but it's there if you want it. Now, we're going to go back to the home page, and let's talk about kind of the anatomy of the page as we move downward. Right below the, this top area, you'll see the, this picture with the two people sitting near the computer and our, our logo on there. That's an open-ended area for you as far as your branding. You can put pictures, videos, hyperlinks, text, whatever you want. You can keep it totally blank there if you wanted to as well. Now, everything below that is where your course catalog resides. We have five different ways to uh, provide for searching for a class. So it's very intuitive that way. So the first thing is that when you set up a new class and go sign me up, you determine what is the main category of the class. It can be whatever you want, and you can see these listed on the left-hand side. Then uh, as you click on the categories, main categories, out pop, subcategories. You can see that we've got a couple there, so you can have as many as you want of those under each main category. Now, as you click on the subcategory, notice that on the right-hand side, the classes appear. And so you have a couple of options here. This is called our list view. Courses are listed in a very nice, logical, easy to follow list. If you prefer, in lieu of this list view, uh, a different view for your default view, you can have tile view, which would look like this. You can see that it's got pictures. You can have a branded look. And it's, it's just different type of look. The, the uh, disadvantage of this look and feel is that it takes up much more space, a lot more scrolling if you've got a lot of classes. But it's a very nice, pretty branded look. The advantage of the list view is that it's a very concise, logical listing and very precise and um, space efficient for, for the class, especially if you have a lot of classes. Now, in this and the, the list view and the tile view, you can have, you've got some options here. For instance, you've got some uh, fields there, such as the course number. If you don't want to show that, you can turn that off. And there are fields that you can turn on and off for this particular display. You can, uh, you can determine which column is the default sort order, such as it could be alphabetical by the course name, chronological by the start date, or by the location if you wanted to. Now with the location, you can see that we do have some LMS classes there, and we do tie into Blackboard and Canvas learning management systems. Uh, but you, regardless of the venue, whether it's some type of online venue or face-to-face, -face, we can certainly accommodate that. If you're doing a traditional face-to-face -face class, it gives you a little map there as well. Now, the buttons on the right-hand side are customizable with their wording, such as add to cart, second course down. You could say sign up here now or whatever you want. You can also um, set up an enrollment threshold for each class. So when the class becomes full, then that status would literally change to full class. And of course, then one could not sign up in that class. Now, if someone cancels out of that class, and that's assuming you allow for that, you can turn that option off. If they cancel out of a class, freeing up a roster spot, then the Add to Cart button will come back automatically. And of course, the person canceling from the class gets an email confirming that automatically. Additionally, you can exercise on a per course basis a wait space, as you see with that top course, so that when the class is full, one signs up in a wait space. Now, in that case, if someone cancels out of a roster spot in a full class, the first person on the wait list automatically gets placed in the class and gets an email confirming that as well. All that's automatic. So you've got a lot of, lot of automation there to save you time and, and money. Now, if one wants to learn more about an individual class, as I, let's say the garage band techniques on the left side, lower side, I want to learn a little bit more about that. So I simply click on the class itself, and that takes me into what's called the detailed listing. This is a very intuitive way to learn an awful lot about the class. You can see there's an awful lot of information here. For instance, right in the middle where it says read more, this would be the text description. Of course, you can have different formatting, bullets, numbers, different fonts, etc. And then you can have as much information in there as you want. Additionally, you can see that I even linked in a um, YouTube video, which is kind of cool. And then as we move down on the widgets, left-hand side, John Smith, you can have a contact person or not. That could be turned off. 
If you're doing credits, you could have a widget in here that would show what type of credits are available for this class. You can customize those credits to whatever terminology you're using, and you can offer up to five types of credits per course. Below that, of course, is the map that's associated with it. Now, in the middle, this widget's fairly important, dates and times. You can see that this happens to be a two-day class that meets. You can have up to 40 days and times listed there. You can also have it list just the starting and ending date for a lot of folks that do uh, online training, kind of self-serve stuff that can certainly set it up that way. Or it could be totally open-ended if it's a type of thing that's totally start and end it whenever you want. Registration closes by default. It's the day of the course, but that can be changed. You can edit that. And then, of course, here's the instructor. You don't have to have an instructor, but you can have up to three instructors. Now, on the right-hand side, I turned on literally every possibility there. You don't have to exercise these various functions or widgets on the right side, such as availability, how many seats are available, pricing. A couple options there. It can be free. It can be one-size-fits-all price, early bird pricing, You can have where price changes based on a date automatically. You can have membership pricing. So if I'm a member certain group, of a certain group and that's indicated in my account registration form, then it's going to show that discount automatically. You can also have a drop-down price where it shows a series of prices listed there with check boxes on you check the one that's appropriate. Prerequisite uh, can be exercised or not on a per course basis. Obviously, one has to check in the affirmative. And you can do materials as well, external materials that would be uh, included or not included with the course if they want to purchase it if you're doing some type of add-on sale. Now, as we go back to the front page, there are numerous ways to search for the courses. As you see on the left side, like we were demonstrating, you can go through your various categories and it changes in the middle of the screen. Or I can click Show All and it shows all the classes. Now, one thing I should note with the fourth class down, you see there's a little padlock because it requires an access code that you would provide only folks that would be uh, that, that you would provide that access code to. I could also do a keyword search. If I type the word, let's say Excel in there, it's going to search all the titles and descriptions for Excel classes. I could do a date range search from until. I could combine those two, like Excel classes within a certain date range. And finally, I can search on a calendar. If we go to the upper right hand corner, here's our calendar button. And it shows all the classes listed on a particular calendar. If I click on the course itself. It takes me into the detailed description where I could sign up for the class. You can go from month to month. You can have a weekly view, daily view, and you can even filter it by those main categories from that front page. So as you can see, having done this for 20 years, we've thought about a lot of the details. We've thought a lot about um, the, you know, how people think and how people respond to it. So you're going to find that it's a very logical and nicely laid out application. I'm going to log in as a student. I'm not going to create a new account. Let's just sign into an existing account. And let's get this right here. Make sure I'm spelling it properly. Okay, so it's logging me in. Now, the first place it's going to take me is into my account area, where it's going to show the classes I'm signed up for, etc. You can bypass this and it goes directly into sign. You can go directly into signing up for the classes. Or once I'm logged in, you can see that I can jump in here anytime at my account. Left hand side is my student information. But on the right hand side, I can see the classes that I'm currently enrolled in right here. Uh, this is where I would delete myself from a class. I can see my waiting list, of course. Past classes are classes I signed up for but did not complete properly. Maybe I didn't show up or meet whatever the, the uh, academic requirements might be or whatever it might be in your situation. Therefore, I don't get credit having, having uh, not completed it properly. So in order to get credit for a class and to show that I completed it properly, I have to be transcripted. The way that one gets transcripted is either the administrator or the uh, instructor goes into that class roster and simply puts a check mark for every student that has completed it successfully. Now, when that check mark happens, there are three things that happen 
automatically right at that moment. The first thing is the student can come in and view their transcript or completed classes. By the way, you can change the terminology from transcripted to something else if you prefer. And so now I can view this. I can come in here as, as you see Bill Adams, um, Bill Adams, the student. I can come in here and set up a date range filter. So I'm going to go back to uh, September 14 to the current date, click the filter button. It's going to show all the classes that I have completed within those date range. And I can print this out. And so the transcript form is customizable by you. Of course, your logo would be there. But you can include credits it, or not. You can include a final grade, which we did not do on this particular transcript. And you can include attendance or not. So you got a lot of flexibility there. So it gives the students the autonomy to be able to view these types of things on their own. Now, the other thing that happens once they're transcripted is that GoSimeUp will send out their certificate of completion automatically as a PDF with everything filled in. It's kind of cool. No work. Save you time. And you can literally have a different certificate for each class. And then thirdly, the third thing that happens at that same moment when that checkbox occurs is that all the reports, all those reports are updated on the fly because we, we employ dynamic reporting. Even if it's an enrollment report, someone enrolls at that very moment, that enrollment report is going to be updated. So everything, again, is in real time on the fly. Now let's do this. Let's sign up for a class. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, search for a class. And this is a process that we put together and have, have really perfected because we've, we studied a lot of different websites. How do they do it? How do they, we, we studied, how do they do their checkout process, searching for, for things? And many of them fall short because they take so many mouse clicks and it's very unclear where you are in the process. So our goal is twofold, less mouse clicks, more clarity. So the first thing let's do, let's show you the process. I click add to cart, pretty straightforward. Now in this case, um, it does take me into the detailed listing because it's, there's a, you have to check the prerequisite, and if you're doing any type of um, add-on materials there. So we, we check those, and what, I click Add to Cart. So we're good to go. Now we could do one of two things right now. We could sign up for additional classes or check out. So we can check out by clicking the green button or the familiar shopping cart icon, which also gives us the opportunity to empty our cart. Pretty familiar. So I'll click check out. Now let's count the number of mouse clicks that it takes. That was our first mouse click. We talk about clarity. Where are we in the checkout process? At the top, it's very clear where we are, review orders, heading to our payments next. And so you can kind of check your payments. If you look in the kind of lower right corner, you can you can deploy a discount coupon code, dollar percentage, or not. It's up to you uh, on a per class basis. What do we do next? proceed to payment. That's our second mouse click. Now, I should point out that if the class is free, it's not going to go through this step. Obviously, you don't need to go through a payment screen. We can tie into many different credit card gateways so that the credit card money is tendered into your bank directly to you. We take no extra percentages there. You can also have other types of payments like purchase order, pay later, check, or whatever it is you want to do. Uh, so then um, we've selected our payment lower right corner, place the order now. That's our third mouse click. It's processing and tendering the money if you have a payment. And we are now in the class officially at this very moment. We've just been input, we've just been put into the roster. All those reports and informational things are updated. And we've just received an email confirming that we are indeed in that class. You can include in that confirmation specific information about the class or classes that were signed up for, along with a pre-class survey if you want, where they click a link, take a pre-class survey, along with up to five attachments as they relate to the courses, along with a VCS file where one would click the link and it puts the dates and times in their local calendar. There's also a second and third reminder to go out automatically. So all this thing, all this stuff just happens automatically for you. So we, we worked real hard to have a, a front end public system that's a easy to use, very quick and easy, uh, creates a lot of automation for you. So it's going to save you time and money. And I think the site looks cool. Let's jump over to the administrative side of Go Sign Me Up. And 
let's talk about some of the reporting. And as I mentioned, the we've got over 55 reports baked into GoSimia. Obviously, we don't have time to to go through all those. So I'm just going to give you a, a very brief taste of some of our main reports. Uh, if you want more information, feel free to call or email me and I'll throw my information up there again uh, or go to our website, gosamiab.com. And we actually have some really cool videos that show you what I just showed you in a real short video as well as an overview of reporting. So let's get into the reporting. We're on the administrative side of GoSimeUp and you can have as many system administrators as you want. This is the kind of the overview page is sort of a dashboard type of interface. And many of these little boxes or widgets are actual reports, but there are many reports. It's not the full on reports that we're going to jump into here in just a moment. You'll see, for instance, in the upper left hand corner courses at a glance. This gives you an idea here are the courses and you can kind of see what the enrollments are looking like on that right column. Remember, our reports are dynamic, real time. So I'm going through it. I can kind of get an idea of of what the enrollments are looking like. Or if I move to the right, how many students are active? Or if I move down from there, right to the middle widget there to see what enrollments look like each month, so forth. You've got all that, that really great data there. It's just real quick, at a glance kind of stuff. But let's get into a, a more in-depth report. This is called our course Grid. It's a grid style reporting. We like that because it's just so easy to use and flexible and customizable. A great way to measure various metrics and things that, that you will need to see. So we're looking at our current courses. First thing we can do is filter the courses or what courses we're looking at. So I can click a tab here that says past and look at just the past courses, cancel, internal. You can actually have private courses, internal, low enrollment, higher earnings, et cetera. I could also go clear to the right-hand corner at the top, change the date range. So let's open that up. And Let's take a look. Let's go back to August, no, July 15th. So now our filter says, I want to see all of our courses dating back to July 15th of 2015. I could even go to and f further fine tune this filter. You see where it says main category, upper left corner. Well, remember our main categories on that front page? Uh, you can utilize these in reporting as well. And so if I go into, for instance, um, Let's try technology training. So we have our main category of technology training. So now our filter says, I want to see all the technology training courses dating back to July 15th of 2015. We could fine tune it more and say, I only want to see the Excel classes as it relates to the filter we have up here. And look on the left hand side, we have only the Excel classes. Or I could come in here and say, I only want to see Gail Kennedy's classes as it relates to that filter. Notice the next column over, we have only Gail's classes. So you can see that we can really go crazy with all this filtering. And you've got so many options there. I can take these columns, for instance, the instructor column, simply drag it, and move where it is on the screen, or make it the column wider, more narrow. And you'll notice that's very Excel-like. And we do that by we do that by design to make the interface uh, familiar to you. So I'm going to take Gil Kennedy out of the mix, and let's go back to our filter technology training going back to July of 15. Now that we've got the filter set, we can manipulate the data, such as the name of the course. See there? I click it once. It alphabetizes it. Click it again. It's reverse alphabetical. Click the instructors. It's now listed by instructor. Click the start date. It's now listed chronologically. Click the location. It's now listed by location. So I think you get the idea. We just did five reports there. But where it gets re exciting are the metrics. How many people enrolled? Remember, real-time dynamic numbers. Click it once. It goes from low to high enrollment. Click it again, and it reverses it. And so you can see all the different things that we can measure here. Income, credit hours. If you don't want to measure income, guess what? I can take this out. If, let's say you're doing free classes. Take that out. Let's say that I want to um, check what a room number is looking like. So I can put a room number column in there because when you create a course, you determine what room it's in. So there's all kinds of ways that this can be used. I've got credit hours listed. I don't care about seeing those, so I take those out. But this is pretty useful here. But what makes this really cool is look at this button on the upper right-hand corner. I click that, and it's going to convert this into a CSV flat file 
and bring it into Excel if you want, or any third-party application. So you can now take this data, not only see it on the screen, but you can manipulate it in Excel with pivot tables, subtotals, as well as uh, emailing it to other folks. Now, let's say this is a pretty cool report because you've got a, it's kind of a macro 30,000 foot view report, but I want to get more at the micro level and see, for instance, this garage band basics course has five students in it. I want to see who they are. Easy. I just click on the title of the course and it puts me into just that instance of just that course. This is called the course dashboard and it actually does way more than uh, reporting. In fact, reporting is just one small part of what it does. As you see in the middle, uh, you've got your enrollment statistics there, and here are the five students that are listed. I can see the waiting list, waitlisted folks, and canceled folks. You have all that, and of course, there's your Excel button. You can change your roster into a, an Excel format very quick and easy. Uh, we also have various actions or things you can do to, to maintain the course, such as in the upper right-hand corner, if you want to do sign-in sheets, name tags, you know, print a certificate for a student, email the certificate to a student if you want. Uh, email it manually, taking attendance, moving students around, etc. On the right hand corner at the bottom, you can put this course listing in your institutional Facebook page. In fact, that little pop up you saw was uh, Gosami asking me to uh, enter my, my credentials so that I could do that. On the left hand side, you've got your dates and times listed, your description your bio of the instructor. This is where you can maintain how the course looks on the front page. For instance, if I want to change the description, I simply click on that and here it is. I can change it with all my editing tools. Now let's go to, I'm going to show you another report here real quick. This is called the course roster report. It's similar to the, the um, report that we saw the course grid, but it gets into more detail. Each gray bar is a different class offering. And so it's got a little more detailed information. For instance, instead of just showing the name of the, or the numbers of students within each class, it shows you who they are, last name, first name, school, job, title, and level are custom fields. They're going to be different for you. But it's not only going to show the students that are signed up, but it's going to show did they cancel, are they on the waiting list, so if it's a past class, did they attend. I could also go in here and say for the school, all I want to see are Charter Oak folks. So I could type in uh, Charter Oak. Hopefully I spell it correctly here the first time. Click search and you'll see this school column. Everything is filtered out except for Charter Oak. And of course, like our, all of our reports, you can export this to Excel. So that's all very useful. We've also got other reports that, in fact, these are all reports here, but I just want to show this upcoming course summary report. It shows you all the courses that are upcoming from left to right, the course title, the location, and what the enrollments look like. But what makes this really cool is I could say, send this report as an email to this person on these days. It's going to show up in their inbox. So again, it's just a very useful and practical report. We've got many, many, many uh, of those types of reports. Uh, but I just want to give you just sort of a taste of reporting. And one last thing is we do have a, what's called an ad hoc report where you can literally create your own report from scratch with your own filter, the data that you want to include. So it's, it's a pretty useful thing. So that's pretty much what I wanted to get through today to give you just a really brief overview. If you do want to learn more and would want to contact me directly, here is my contact information. You can go to our website as well. Uh, my contact information doesn't want to come up. Oh, there it is. <laughs> a little bit delayed. So this is, again, I'm Greg Smith, and I appreciate you sharing your valuable time. You can find out more information at our website also, which is gosamyup.com. Thank you very much, and have a good rest of the day.